Hey, welcome back in. This is the Steve Gill Show with Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam. Known each other longer than either of us want to remember or uh, <laughs> either of us want to expose. And uh, glad to have you back. Glad to have you back in the country. You got a chance to go visit with our troops in uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. And as we were talking just a few moments ago, uh, these young kids, uh, first of all, they make us feel older. And right. they look just like our kids, which makes us feel older. <laughs> or younger. Um, but, man, they are they are go-getters. And they armor up. They're the greatest warriors in history. And yet there is that compassion for the people they are there to work with that, that also you just can't ignore. In this I, I was so impressed uh, when I came. First of all, it's, it's obviously dangerous work. Second, it's hard. I mean, it's it's hot. You know, Iraq was 130. You're in a bad neighborhood. It's not just where you are, but, you know, you've got Pakistan on one side, Iran on one side. It's it's tough. Uh, and then t- just think about being away from home for a year, you know, totally away from you're sleeping, you know, you're in, you're sleeping in, you know, fairly rugged conditions. You don't, you're not seeing the folks you love. And then here's the thing that people here miss is imagine every day of every week of every month you go to work. You know, there's not a day off in the war zone, and so you're working 15 hours a day, seven days a week. It's hard, and I don't, I think I don't think we have a great appreciation for how hard it is. And we're sending them back time and time again. My my nephew Mark is getting ready to head back on his third tour in wow. Afghanistan as an Army Ranger. And wow. I mean, we're wearing these guys yeah. out. We, we are. We are now. You know, we're, and our equipment. It, it, the, the equipment's. T- I mean, we were sitting there and they were working on some uh, helicopters when we were in Iraq one day in 130 degree weather. And I said, "How does this work?" And he goes, "They said it doesn't." I mean, you think about so go put your laptop outside for in 130 degree weather for about an hour and see what happens to it. Well, and, and I think folks have a sense that it's it's a dry heat, and, and in <laughs> Afghanistan it may be, but in Baghdad you're surrounded by all these rivers. Yeah. It's 133 and about 100 percent humidity. It, it it's is. like being in Memphis. It, it's, it, <laughs> it's, it's just hard. To, it's hard to describe how hard it is, and you know these guys are just imagine you know working all day long, your 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 camo sweat stained, and it's not going to get any better tomorrow. And the 170 pound guys wearing 100 pounds of gear too. <laughs> you know, that's, you know, it's like you or me climbing on their back. They wouldn't like that at they, all. When they put that body armor. On me, I thought, dang, I don't know if I'd want to carry this around every day. <laughs> Obviously, the um, the Tennessee Guard has been been actively yeah. involved, and, and as you pointed, I think I saw one of the news clips. Everywhere you turned around over there, you were running into Tennesseans. The volunteer state is truly stepping up. It, it is literally the reason I, we, I asked the Pentagon because they hadn't taken one of these trips for governors in a long time. They took, just took four. I said, well, why, how did you all ask us? They said, well, you all, each of your states has a huge. Uh, Percentage turnout for both the regular guard and the army, but I'm uh, and the guard, uh, regular army and the guard. Interesting though, I was up in a place up uh, really outside of Kabul, fairly rough area, and went in and there's a group of uh, the 190th out of Tennessee, and th- these are guards, so they're you know heck they're like us in real life, but they just happen now to be over there fighting for a year, uh, and these guys' job was to clean to to sweep the road for mines. They were ro- they were route clearing. That was their job, so that commerce could happen. If you know if if the bag guys take over the roads and business can't happen the economy goes down and the bad guys win uh and so this very fundamental piece of capitalism opened up the road these guys are out there doing in minesweepers looking for ieds uh and like i said in in real life these guys are cpas and firefighters etc it's really impressive Uh, of course when i left uh, i said hey i really want to thank you they said well you can pay us back get us all tennessee football tickets this fall so (laughs) (laughs) one of the things that struck me the times that we've had the opportunity to go over there and and i I always feel like we get more from the trip than they do yeah it's it's, no question the the same thing as all these country music stars say man they get so much more out of going than these guys do but but the biggest complaint we heard here is 130 degrees they're saying you know what'd be wrong with us being able to have a cold beer when we come in off duty and i asked one of the commanders and he said steve we've already got a fraternity house with weapons do you really think we need to add alcohol to (laughs) the mix i'm going "Eh, it's probably not a great idea when you think it through the other piece that i know you have to deal with all the time is is jobs i mean the economy is is on the top of folks Mm -hmm. minds we've been talking things seem to be be slowing down the president for i think the seventh or eighth time now says he's going to refocus his attention on jobs you've never lost that focus on the fact that that we need to get tennesseans to work get folks uh, back at, at what they're wanting to be doing in their jobs how much effort are you focused on in these states that are doing everything it seems like to send business our way the illinois the, the californias I, I know you've got bill Haggerty and, and others that are really focused on getting those jobs what are you doing on a day-to-day basis in terms of okay how do we go steal this big company from illinois and get it in tennessee well a couple things one we're, we're doing just we're doing just what you'd do if you were out trying to sell or recruit anything we're, we're going there and taking the fight to the ground if you will so uh, i'll be in Chicago later this kind month. Of like one of those football coaches at Tennessee trying to figure out, okay, how do we recruit? You got it. You got it. How do we go get guys out of Georgia? How do we, you know, so so we're, we'll be in Chicago uh, in a couple weeks. We'll be in California in three or four weeks. But 
But I, one emphasis we're putting is really on Tennessee companies. All, all of our research has shown about 80% of the new job growth comes from existing businesses, or 80% plus. And so what we literally have two dinners a week uh, at the governor's residence where we invite businesses existing, and we'll have one tonight, existing businesses saying, first of all, if you're going to grow anywhere, grow here. Put that new branch, or is there something you have that you can move here? Um, because, like I said, I think that's where most jobs are created. And then we're trying to find out, are, do we have regulations in place that are making it harder for you? Or is, is there red tape that, that, that makes you say, you know, I'm going to take my capital and invest it somewhere? What everybody has to understand is capital is going to go where it can get the best return, period. And it doesn't know boundaries, state, national, or anything. And our job is to make Tennessee the place where people say, that's where I want to invest my capital, because just know this. Government doesn't create jobs, never has, never will. The only thing that creates jobs are when people are willing to invest capital. And when that happens, it's a direct line correlation with jobs. You know, we've known each other for a long time, and you've always been a guy focused on doing the job, not worrying about the credit and, and right. the politics. But you're in a political job. How do you measure that small business growth? Because, I mean, if, if Joe's Barbershop adds one guy, that's not going to get the attention as when a Nissan comes to it, it doesn't. It, it, you're, you're, it, it doesn't. And you don't get the headline either. But I think over a period of time, we measure things like, you know, GDP per capita. Where do we stand on unemployment? Where All those cr- key critical data, we can measure that. Keep up the good work. Come back in regularly. We'll talk with you again soon, and uh, we'll see you again. Love being here. Thanks a lot. And we'll be back uh, tomorrow. Have a great day. And in the meantime, go to gillreport.com. We'll keep you up to date. This is the Steve Gill Show.